of Defence has announced that four British soldiers were killed in southern Afghanistan yesterday. Their next of kin have been informed. Our correspondent James Robbins joins me now. What happened? Three separate incidents in Helmand yesterday. Two of the soldiers, one from the 1st Battalion, the Royal Gurkha Rifles, and the other from 173 Provost Company of the Royal Military Police were, according to NATO, killed by a suicide bomber, and they were taking part in a patrol in Gereshk. And I should point out that that attack also killed at least 16 Afghan civilians and wounded 30 more, so that was a very substantial suicide attack. Another British soldier from 2nd Battalion, the Rifles, was killed when his Jackal patrol vehicle was hit by a so-called improvised explosive device, almost certainly a roadside bomb, and that happened near Sangin last night. And in the third incident, the fourth soldier from the Black Watch, the 3rd Battalion, the Royal Regiment of Scotland, he died from a gunshot wound. He was shot dead uh, while on patrol with the Afghan National Army near Musa Kala. It, it's the bloodiest day, though, for several months, isn't it, for British forces? It's the bloodiest day, frankly, for almost a year. That's right. And um, it, it goes to show just how perilous it is for, for, for the forces fighting out there. It does, and it shows the range of tactics that the Taliban are prepared to use in order to inflict casualties. The first incident, the suicide bomber, taking many more Afghan lives, of course, than the lives of British soldiers. Another one, a remote-controlled roadside bomb. The third, a more conventional, if you like, hand-to-hand -hand fighting shooting incident. The army is under pressure. The Ministry of Defence have known this would be a very tough year, and so it's proving to be. James Robbins, thank you very much. 2,000 jobs are at risk at one of the biggest steel plants in the UK. The Teesside Cast Products plant in Redcar is facing closure. The owner's chorus said the move was unavoidable after it lost a contract with four international steel slab buyers. Well, our correspondent Laura Bicker is there now. What more can you tell us? Well, I can tell you that steelmaking is the lifeblood of this community. It's been produced here since 1840, and its future now depends on a legal battle, a battle to force a group of international companies to honour a 10-year contract. That was a